some reason they've never tasted. They've just, they're so good. <laughs> the baby is making them taste better. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I'm going to go live. Everybody ready? Okay. Wait, do the countdown. Well. Good afternoon. My name is Aaliyah Miller, and I'm a community health worker with NKCDC. I want to thank you all for joining us for our virtual health hour segment, Just Breathe. Today, we will be talking about asthma. Joining us from Jefferson, we have Ms. Militia, Melissa Ash, who is a registered respiratory therapist. We will also be doing a giveaway for a HEPA air purifier, a humidifier, and a cleaning supply kit. My fellow CHWs, Antonia and Francesca, will be sharing the link via our Facebook, which is New Kensington. New Kensington is spelled out CDC, and also on our YouTube page, which is New Kensington Community Development Corporation. All right. Hello, Melissa, how are you doing today? Good, thank you, how are you? I'm good. Can you just give us a little background about who you are and what you do? Oh, sure. Uh, my name is Melissa Ash. I am a registered respiratory therapist um, and I have been for 17 years. I've worked at Jefferson for 17 years. Um, my main area of expertise is the surgical critical care unit um, and also the neonatal um, intensive care unit. In the last five years or so, um, I've really gotten into um, teaching and a lot of, I've done a lot of teaching about asthma and living with asthma. So that's me. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, would you like to present your screen? Melissa is going to present us with the PowerPoint that she put together. Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, asthma, and we're going to go over um, a bunch of different facts. So if anybody has any questions, um, just type them in the chat, and they'll get to me, and I'll be able to answer them for you. Um, first, I want to go over what asthma exactly is, um, and it's a disease where your airways actually swell up and produce extra mucus. So when this happens, it makes it really difficult to breathe because the air can't move in and out. And if you look at the pictures, you can see what the airway of an asthmatic looks like and what a normal airway looks like. Um, so as you can see, the, the asthmatic airway is, is really tight and it's hard to, to move the air. And when the air does move through it, um, it can make like a whistling or a wheezing sound and it can... Um, the mucus that it's producing can cause the person to cough. Um, and it makes them feel like they're short of breath, like they just cannot get enough air in. And that's because it's so small compared to what it normally should look like. Um, I just want to point out that asthma is not something that can be cured, but with certain types of medicine, um, your symptoms can be controlled. And because your body changes over time and it grows, um, your asthma also changes as well. So it is important to try and keep track of your symptoms if you can um, and let your doctor know because he, they can um, adjust your medicine as needed. There's four different levels of asthma. And I always like to kind of go over this because this always seems to, to surprise people. Um, I know a lot of people, when they think of asthma, they just think of it as a disease. They don't realize that there's different levels. And based on those different levels is how your doctor or your pulmonologist can prescribe the medications for you and that will um, help control your symptoms. So the first level is the interme um, intermittent asthma. And that's when you really don't have a whole lot of symptoms. You might have it less than twice a week. Um, and it really does not wake you up at all uh, when you sleep, maybe less than two times a night or two, 
two nights a month, sorry. Um, the next one is mild persistent asthma. And that's when you experience symptoms two or more days a week and you wake up from your, um, from your asthma, having an asthma attack three to four times a, a night. No, three to four nights a month. Sorry, I'm having a hard time with this today. I don't know why. Um, and moderate persistent asthma is when you have symptoms at least every day and it wakes you up one or more nights a week. And then the severe persistent asthma is when you have symptoms every day and you wake up every night having an asthma attack and not being able to breathe. Okay. So just some quick facts. More than 3 million cases of asthma are diagnosed each year. So that means asthma is very common and a lot of people suffer from it. Um, as I said before, the treatments to manage it, um, but there's no cure for it. A lot of times um, in order to be diagnosed, you're gonna have to go through a lot of lab tests and imaging, which means like chest X-rays, CAT scans. Uh, a lot of times they'll do like, pulm it's called a pulmonary function test or a PFT um, to see how severe or not severe your asthma is. Um, this one always kind of surprises people too. It can last for several years or be lifelong. So a lot of times kids are diagnosed with it at a very early age. And then as they grow, because their bodies change, they um, really don't experience asthma symptoms at all. And then later in life, it can come back. If you have a family history of asthma, it increases your likelihood of um, getting it. And if you have a very severe case where you really can't breathe, we recommend that you go to the emergency room and don't try and treat it at home. So these are some common triggers. Um, pet dander, that's a, that's a big one. The cats and dogs in the house, um, they, a lot of people can be allergic to them and that's what causes the um, airways to swell. Um, some food and beverages, if you're, again, if you're allergic to different ones, that can cause um, an asthma attack. When you get sick, um, your certain respiratory infections can, can trigger your asthma. Um, and that's because, you know, it's affecting your airways. It can cause your, your airways to swell and then um, it'll cause like extra mucus, um, genetics, smoking. Smoking is a big one. A lot of people don't realize this. The chemicals in the cigarettes and um, the secondhand smoke and even the thirdhand smoke can um, trigger asthma attacks. There's um, different air pollutants that can do it, different chemicals and perfumes, dust. Um, acid reflux is another big one, um, which is always surprises people too. And anxiety and stress. I always like to point this out because when you, when a person feels like they can't breathe, the first thing that they do is become very anxious and they get stressed out because they can't breathe and they, they feel like they can't get air in. It's so important to try and keep that person calm and try and get them to relax because that helps relax the, um, the airways. And it's so much easier said than done. I've had asthma my whole life. And when I have an asthma attack, I still get very anxious because I can't breathe. And so I just have to kind of re remind myself, I need to stay calm. I need to stay calm. This is going to help. Um, there are certain medications that um, can trigger asthma attacks. Uh, they're called beta blockers. They're used to treat like heart disease or high blood pressure. Um, also migraine medicines or glaucoma medicines can um, trigger asthma attacks. And that's because they work on the same type of um, muscles that are in your lungs. And anti-inflammatory drugs, such as like Advil or Aleve, again, they work on the same type of um, muscles that are in your drugs and that are in your lungs. And that's why it can cause um, an asthma attack. And exercising, that's another big one um, that can cause an asthma attack. And I always get a laugh when I say this, cockroach droppings. There's something in the cockroach droppings that 
causes um, your lungs to swell and your lungs to produce mucus. So we always recommend trying to um, vacuum as much as you can. That will help with the um, dust mites and the, the animal dander. We always recommend to um, changing your pillow every two years because your pillow absorbs all the, um, like it can absorb the animal dander, but it can also absorb the pollen from outside that you bring in if you don't shower before bed. Um, so we always try and recommend doing that. Washing your sheets once a week. That's a good way to um, help avoid the animal or the um, asthma triggers. And rugs are a huge trap for molds and dust and animal dander and all of that. So if you can, and I, it's easier said than done, if you can switch to um, like hardwood floors or um, like some kind of floor that's not a rug, that will help um, reduce your, your triggers as well. So this is kind of what it feels like if you can imagine what it, um, an asthma attack, what it feels like. So the air, your, the inside of your airways becomes swollen and inflamed, and then it produces mucus. So it makes it so hard to breathe. If you take a straw and you try and breathe through a straw, you, like you get a good seal around that straw, you have a really hard time getting enough air in, and that's what it feels like when you're having an asthma attack. It can be really, really scary. So what to look for if some, if you think somebody's having an asthma attack, if they look like they're, they can't breathe, they're hunched forward. I'm trying to show you if they're hunched forward, that helps them um, like pull in the air and exhale the air. So a lot of times if somebody's having an asthma attack, you'll see them like hunched forward. Um, if they're breathing fast, if you hear them wheezing. If they're, if they're telling you that they have um, chest pain or chest tightness, um, a lot of times because they're having so much trouble getting the air in, you'll see their nostrils flare. If they cannot speak in full sentences, that's a um, big sign that they're having an asthma attack. Um, and coughing, that's another one, because they, they feel like they just have so much mucus in their chest and they're trying to get it out. So the first thing that you want to do is ask somebody, or if it's you, um, if they have their quick relief medications. And these quick relief medications will help open the lungs by relaxing the airways. Um, they will not reduce the inflammation or the swelling in the lungs. They just relax the muscles of the lungs, which will help open up the airways. Um, they begin working within minutes and they um, will last for like four to six hours usually. And then the person will have to um, retake their medicine. Um, a lot of times if you have, if you know that um, exercise is one of your triggers, you can use the quick relief medications prior to exercising, or if you know that you're going to be around one of your triggers, you can use the, the quick relief um, medication to help prevent the asthma attack from, from happening. Um, they do help um, ease the symptoms from getting worse and they can stop an asthma attack from progressing. So that's why it's very important to try and use these medications if you can. Um, now, if you come across somebody who is having an asthma attack and they don't have their medication, um, I always tell them to have the person sit down and try and tell them to relax, try not to get worked up or anxious. Again, that's easier said than done. Um, you do want to call 911, but then if you can find caffeine, like a soda or coffee, caffeine will help um, the, it helps relax the airway muscles. It has the same um, effect as the quick relief medications. It's not as strong and it does not take the place of the quick relief medications, but it will help in the event that those medications are not available. Okay. And then I always like to show, these are the um, different short acting, your short relief inhalers. You have your Prevenal, your, um, the Prevenal HFA, the Max Air and the Benalin. 
So this is what you're looking for if somebody's having an asthma attack. This is one of the inhalers that you would look for. We do have long-term medications that will help um, control your symptoms. And this is how your symptoms are controlled. The short acting ones will not control your symptoms. You do need something um, more long-term like a um, steroid or it's called a LABA, a long acting beta agonist. And those are um, like your Advair, your Flovent, Dolera, those, those are your long acting medicines. So you do not want to take them if you're having an asthma attack you don't want to use them. They're not going to stop your asthma attack and they're not going to um, help you breathe better. They will, if you take them on a daily basis, the way that your doctor prescribes, it will help prevent asthma attacks from happening though. These are all the different um, kinds of medications that are available out there for asthmatics. Um, I just like kind of like showing this because a lot of times people can't remember what their medication is. Um, so if you tell us what color it is, you know, oh, I take the, the blue inhaler and it helps me when I'm having an asthma attack. We'll say, okay, that's phenylalanine. Or if you say I take, it's a purple disc and I take it every day, we'll say, oh, that's Advair. So I just like kind of showing this. So this is how you use your inhaler. Um, this is important to know if you're an asthmatic, but also if um, somebody that you love is an asthmatic, you wanna make sure that they take the inhaler correctly. Um, otherwise it's not gonna help stop or ease the symptoms of the asthma attack. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna tell them to breathe out. You're gonna um, take the inhaler, shake it, and you're gonna put it into their mouth. Tell them to breathe in as they're pushing down the canister of the inhaler or as you're pushing down the canister of the inhaler. You want them to breathe in so that they can get that medicine into their lungs. You want them to try and inhale um, steadily. You don't want them to go. <gasps> you want them to try and do a slow inhale to help get that medicine in and you want to um, you want to tell them to try and do it deeply so then that way the medi the medication gets deeper into their lungs um, and then remove the inhaler from the mouth and you want to try and tell them to hold their breath for 10 seconds if possible um, sometimes they they can't and that's fine just hold it as long as they can and that just allows for the medication to get deeper into their lungs and then you can re you repeat the whole process for the second puff So when you are first diagnosed with asthma, um, your doctor is gonna sit down and come up with an asthma plan for you. And what the asthma plan entails is just ways to avoid your asthma triggers. Um, he will, or she will give you medications to use um, and the, that will be your long-term medications as well as your quick relief medications. And they'll tell you how to use them how frequently to use them, all of that will be included in your, in your management plan. There are um, certain steps, which is the next slide, but they tell you where you are and how well you're doing and when to seek help. And then it's really important to make sure that you have a good relationship with your family, your allergist, and your doctors, um, because your asthma plan is going to have to be adjusted as your body changes. So these are the different zones that will tell you where you are. Um, and this is also, this is part of the, the asthma management plans that we like. Um, green, the green zone, we, we always use the traffic light. The green zone means you're doing good, you feel great, your asthma is not bothering you, and you just kind of use your pre preventative medicine as needed. If you're in your yellow zone, that means that you had, you're having some trouble breathing, so you added your quick relief medication to kind of help you make it through the day. And the red zone is the danger zone. And that means that you need to call your doctor and you need to get help from them immediately. This is um, just an example of what your doctor may give you uh, for your asthma 
action plan. Um, if you look, the green zone, you have no coughing, no wheezing, no chest tightness, no difficulty breathing. You can perform your daily activities as normal. And they'll tell you what medication to take and how much and when, when you're in this zone. If you drop down to the yellow zone, it's you feel a little chest tightness, you have some coughing, you have some wheezing going on, you might be woken up at nighttime from it. They'll tell you what medicines to add on to the medicines that are in the green zone. And then if you're in the, the red zone, that's where you're having a whole lot of trouble breathing, you're coughing, you're wheezing, nothing's helping. Um, they'll tell you what to add, what to do, and you need to call your doctor or call 911 if you're in your red zone. These are just um, some sources, local and national, um, for the for asthma that can help. Any questions? Hey. Hi, Melissa. Oh, I'm sorry. Aaliyah? You can go ahead, Miss Sophia. You're fine. Um, I have one question I wanted to ask, Melissa. Sure. What are some good um, family friend support mechanisms that we can offer to someone who suffer with um, asthma on a, on a daily basis? Um, I think the biggest thing would be to let them know that you know how to help them. Um, ask them to review their action plan with you. Mm -hmm. So then that way, you know um, exactly what to do should they get into trouble or should they have an asthma attack. Um, and sometimes asthma can be you know, pretty emotional, especially when it's not under control and you're trying out different medications. So just be there to listen to them. Mm -hmm. um, if they're scared about testing, offer to, to take them to the testing, to hold their hand, mm -hmm. um, just be a good support system for them. Okay, thank you. And thank you for that information. Oh, thank you for allowing me to present it. <laughs> hey, Melissa. So I know earlier when you were uh, presenting, you, you did list some common triggers for yes. asthma, but what about when the weather changes, when it's like super hot or super cold? Does that affect uh, your asthma as well? Yes, definitely. And you know what? Thank you. I forgot to, to mention that. Um, the Going from being inside like a nice warm house or building and going out into the extreme cold can cause your um, the airway muscles to spasm and to swell and cause an asthma attack. Um, so if you know that it's extremely cold outside and you know that's one of your triggers, you're going to want to take your, your short acting, your quick relief medication before you walk outside. Um, and that being said, even in the summertime, sometimes it's, if it's extremely humid, that can cause um, airway swelling as well and mucus production. Um, so again, you would, before you go outside, you wouldn't want to take that, that medication. Okay, thank you. And you also noted that there's no cure for asthma but eventually, like as a child, it could be really bad, but as you grow up, it um, it just balances it out. I relate to that because as a child, I had asthma, but as an adult, it doesn't affect me as bad, but I had a situation where I had to go to the hospital and I didn't know I was having an asthma attack because I was like, well, I didn't have nothing wrong with me since a child. <laughs> So thanks for bringing that up. They helped me be aware, like to still look out for the signs. And my son has asthma now. So, and his is bad, like to the point where I might have to go to the hospital if I don't keep it under control. It's, it's really scary. I always like to point out that you can have it as a kid and then not have it affect you for years. And then as an adult, you kind of forget sometimes what it's like to not be able to breathe and to have an asthma attack. And when it happens, it's scary. And you don't, you know, sometimes a lot of times you don't remember what it's like. You, you kind of block that experience out from as a child. So I always like to, to point that out, that it can happen. And it's, it's not unusual if it does. I've got a question. Um, have you ever seen, or is it possible for 
as much to start as an adult? Like you don't have it at all as a child, but then you start having it as an adult? Um, yes. A lot of times with um, smokers, if you've smoked a long period of time, you will notice that you're having a hard time breathing and um, your airways are starting to swell up and you have that wheezing. Um, it can, it doesn't even necessarily have to be if you smoke, if you've just been around a lot of secondhand smoke or thirdhand smoke. Um, environmental factors can play a role too. If you live in a very um, densely populated area where there's a lot of air pollution, that can cause cause it to happen. I have one other question. Sure. With the fact that we're living in a COVID society or world, um, what masks do you recommend for people who do suffer with asthma or any other chronic uh, respiratory diseases? I recommend wearing whatever mask you can breathe in and whatever mask you feel comfortable in because it's just important to wear a mask. Um, so as long as you can breathe in it and you feel comfortable wearing it, I would say go for it. I prefer the surgical masks, the, the blue ones that you see um, a lot of the doctors and healthcare workers wearing. Um, I think that's just because that's what I'm used to, <laughs> to wearing. So that's why I think I prefer it. Um, but it's whatever mask you feel comfortable in, but it is so important to wear it because as we know, COVID can affect your lungs. And if you already have lung issues, that could be, you know, it can make it even worse. And the one thing that we are kind of seeing with COVID is that the short acting relief medicines are not helping to open up your airways and not giving people that relief. So it is really important to, to wear your mask and wash your hands. I know you were saying also carpet plays um, a, a big deal in asthma and keeping it going. Yes. So even if you had like hardwood floors, would a like small area rug effect have the same effect? No, because um, it's not it's not a big area, and the small area rugs, if you you can still vacuum, but you can also change them out. If you have to, if you notice that it's starting to affect your asthma, you can change them out. But usually because it's a small area, it does not have the same effect as the, the rugs throughout the whole house. Okay. And I have a, a question from someone online. Okay. They ask, what is the best way to have your asthma dormant? And does it have to, does it have to do with, the one, with someone's weight? Oh, that's a good question. I don't, um, I don't know about the, the weight. I want to say, um, in my experience, no. Um, the, the very skinniest person up into, you know, somebody who weighs a thousand pounds, um, I haven't necessarily seen it make a difference um, as to whether they're going to have more triggers or more asthma attacks. Um, but the best way to get it to lie dormant would be to use your control medicines, your, your long acting medicines. That would be your steroids or the long acting beta agonist. Um, and just to, to follow what your doctor says and um, what he prescribes for you. Okay, and another question is from Tori. She asks, if you live in a place where you are frequently exposed to second and third hand cigarette smoke, how would you recommend maintaining that trigger? Um, try and get on some control medicines that will, that will help um, control and help prevent um, asthma attacks, but also using a HEPA filter that will help absorb some of that um, smoke and help filter out the air for you. All right. And if you weren't tuned in when uh, we opened up, we do have a HEPA filter as one of our giveaways. So we have a humidifier, cleaning supplies, and a HEPA filter that we'll be giving away. Uh, on our YouTube page, which is New Kensington Community Development Corporation, 
it's a link in for you to fill out the form. And on our Facebook page, New Kensington, New Kensington is spelled out CDC. And you can find the form there. Our CHWs, Antonia and Francesca, will get your information and pass it over and we'll do the drawing. And we're also announcing who won today before we end our virtual health hour. I have another question uh, for Melissa. As far as surgeries go, um, is there any, there's no type of surgery to open up airways even to help relieve a little bit of asthma? Um, so that's actually a really good question. And I know um, Temple Lung is doing this um, and Jefferson also does it as well. Um, but it's for the most severe asthmatic cases where you suffer from symptoms every single day and you're woken up every single night um, from it. And they go in through a bronchoscopy, which is the um, scope that they put down into your lungs. And they are able to kind of stretch the airways. Um, it's not for everyone. You, there's certain, there's very, very, very strict criteria that you have to meet for it. Um, and honestly, I don't know what that criteria is off the top of my head because it's, we at Jefferson don't do it very often. I think I've only ever seen it done three or four times in the past couple of years. Um, and it's for the most severe cases of asthma. Is that just because it's a dangerous um, um, surgery? No, it just hasn't been shown to be effective in any other of the levels of asthma. Okay. Because it is just the block, the blocking of the, I forget exactly what you said. But. Yeah, the, the airways. So yeah. it's your airways swell and produce more mucus with asthma. Okay. And um, so a lot of, so what the surgery does is when you're, when you're constantly bothered by your by your asthma symptoms and you're constantly having asthma attacks, it will help open those airways so that they don't, so that they're not constantly swollen. So with, with that, like the highest level of um, asthma, your, your airways are just, no matter what type of medicine you're on, no matter what you do, your airways are just constantly swollen. So the, the procedure um, goes in and actually just opens the airways. But with the other three levels, your airways aren't always in that, that swelling stage. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm it, just, it, it kind of comes and goes. The mucus part, though, is that, does, is mucus something that comes from glands or? Um, yes, but it can also, um, your lung, the, the muscles of your lungs, like your lungs are constantly producing mucus and that's how um, they trap bacteria so you don't get sick. It's how um, it, believe it or not, it kind of helps keep your lungs open as well too. Um, so your lungs are just constantly producing them and, and whether you realize it or not, it, it, it's going on. So with asthma, it's an overproduction of the mucus. Okay. It's, um, unfortunate there hasn't been a cure. Yeah after all this time. Mm, yeah, hopefully soon. Yeah. All right, Melissa, we have a few more questions for you. Sure. Ms. Lizette asks, does drinking something warm help with opening your airway and does that make it easier to breathe? Um, drinking something warm, not necessarily. It's more the caffeine. That you need. So tea has caffeine in it. Um, so you can drink that warm or cold coffee. Again, that's, that's warm. It can be warm that has the caffeine in it. So it's not necessarily something warm. It's more the caffeine in it that will help. And that's, um, like I said, that has the same effect as the short relief medicines. Um, it's not nearly as strong, but it will help. Um, and it will, hopefully um, keep you calm or keep the person calm and not as anxious because they feel like they're starting to be able to breathe a little bit better um, until you can either get that medicine or, you know, somebody comes and like the paramedics come and can help you with that. 
Okay. So when you say, um, in case your loved one or somebody close are is having an asthma attack and give them caffeine, do you recommend a type of caffeine to give them? Or um, is it like whatever that's available to you at the time? Yes, whatever is available at the time. Okay. Or, or whatever they will drink. So, oh. you know, if you, if you have a variety of coffee right there at your hands and the person's not a coffee drinker, I wouldn't, I would say, don't give them a coffee, give them, you know, something that they're going to drink. Okay. And another question is, is it true that if you're on steroids, it starts to eat away at your bones? So there's two different types of, well, there's several different types of steroids. There's the, um, the IV steroids. And if you end up having such a severe attack, when you go to the hospital, they will give you IV steroids because that will um, relax those muscles and help reduce that swelling right away. The other type of um, steroids is an oral steroid where you take it by mouth. And that's what um, can affect your bones if you use it long term. Um, which a lot of times doctors will not let people be on long term unless it, they're so severe that they need to be. Um, when you go to the doctors and you you know, have some kind of like respiratory infection and they put you on the, it's called a medral dose pack. It's five days and it tapers down. You know, you start out at like a high dose and then you go down to a very low dose that won't affect your bones. It's when you're on it long-term that it can, it can affect you. And if you're on um, the inhaled steroid, which is like, I was talking about the inhalers that will not, that should not affect your bones because it's, um, you're inhaling it. It's not being absorbed through your, your, your body. It's being absorbed into your lungs, not the rest of your body. Okay. And another true or false question. Is it true people that suffer from asthma will always get bronchitis when the seasons change? Um, not necessarily. If you are very well controlled and you're on, you take your controllers every day and you take them the way that they're prescribed, you can um, bypass getting bronchitis. It doesn't mean that you won't get it, but it should help prevent that. Okay. Thank you. Sure. That's all the questions that I believe I have. Let me double check to make sure I didn't miss out on anybody. Question. Um, where, yep. Anthony, would you like to share? Would you like to share our TED Talk video? Yeah. I will do that. Give me just a second. All right. This is just a TED talk that we found about um, asthma. Um, it has a lot of good information. Can everyone hear? You should turn it, uh, it's low, the volume is low. Is that better? I don't think that's bad. Okay. V 
These are common symptoms of an asthma attack. Around the world, more than 300 million people suffer from asthma, and around 250,000 people die from it each year. But why do people get asthma, and how can this disease be deadly? Asthma affects the respiratory system, particularly the smaller airways, such as the bronchi and bronchioles. These airways have an inner lining called the mucosa that's surrounded by a layer of smooth muscle. In people with asthma, the airways are chronically inflamed, which can make them hyper-responsive to certain triggers. Some of the many asthma triggers include tobacco smoke, pollen, dust, fragrances, exercise, cold weather, stress, and even the common cold. When people with asthma are exposed to these triggers, an asthma attack or exacerbation can occur. But how exactly do such everyday factors lead to an asthma attack? If an asthmatic is exposed to a trigger, the smooth rings of muscle that circle the small airways in their lungs contract and become narrow. Simultaneously, the trigger worsens inflammation, causing the mucosal lining to become more swollen and secrete more mucus. Under normal conditions, the body uses this mucus to trap and clear particles, like pollen or dust. But during an asthma attack, it blocks the narrowed airways, making it even harder to breathe. These effects lead to the symptoms of asthma. Smooth muscle constriction results in the feeling of chest tightness. Excess mucus and increased inflammation can cause coughing. And the wheezing noise? That happens because as the airways constrict, air whistles as it passes through the narrowed space. These symptoms may make a person feel like they're running out of air. Yet counterintuitively, during an asthma attack, the inflammation can make it harder to exhale than inhale. Over time, this leads to an excess of air in the lungs, a phenomenon known as hyperinflation. The trapping of air inside the lungs forces the body to work harder to move air in and out of them. Over time, this can lead to reduced oxygen delivery to the body's organs and tissues. Sometimes, in untreated severe asthma attacks, the body can't keep up, which can lead to death from lack of oxygen. So how do we prevent these uncomfortable and potentially fatal attacks in people who have asthma? One way is to reduce the presence of triggers. Unfortunately, the world is an unpredictable place, and exposure to triggers can't always be controlled. This is where inhalers, the primary treatment for asthma, come in. These medications help asthmatics both control and prevent their asthma symptoms. Inhalers transport medication along the affected airways using a liquid mist or fine powder to treat the problem at its source. They come in two forms. There are reliever medications, which treat symptoms immediately and contain beta agonists. Beta agonists relax constricted muscles, allowing the airways to widen so more air can travel into and out of the lungs. The other form of inhalers serve as preventive medications, which treat asthma symptoms over the long term and contain corticosteroids. Corticosteroids reduce airway sensitivity and inflammation so asthma can be kept under control. They're also crucial in preventing long-term damage from chronic inflammation, which can cause scarring of the airways. Inhalers are known to be very effective and have helped many people live better lives. Although we've come a long way in improving how we treat and diagnose asthma, we still don't know its exact causes. We currently believe that a combination of genetic and environmental factors play a role, potentially acting during early childhood. Recent research has even linked poverty to asthma incidents. This may be due to reasons ranging from exposure to additional pollutants and environmental irritants to difficulties in obtaining medical care or treatment. As our understanding of asthma improves, we can continue to find better ways to keep people's airways happy and healthy. Thank, thank you, Anthony, for showing that video for us. I believe that gave us all a better understanding about how asthma works. 
Again, guys, I want to mention that we are doing a raffle giveaway for a HEPA air purifier, a humidifier, and a, complete, and a cleaning supply kit. To enter that drawing, you must enter via our Facebook page, which is New Kensington. New Kensington is spelled out CDC, or our YouTube page, which is New Kensington the Community Development Corporation. Again, we will be giving away those three uh, items in a raffle. So if you enter, we'll get your names, we'll do the raffle, and we'll have um, whoever those three winners are, we'll have your uh, prize delivered to you sometime next week. So please make sure to fill out the form and enter the raffle. These are great objects for many of us who suffer with, with asthma. Aliyah, have any more questions popped up? I'm checking. Uh, I don't have any more questions so far. Miss Sophia, Ashley, uh, Anthony, do y'all have anything that y'all thought of that y'all might have wanted to ask? I don't have any more questions, but I do have comments. I want to thank Melissa for coming out to share such wealth of information to us on asthma. And it is greatly appreciated. I think we all learned a lot today. So on that one breath of note, I just say thanks again. Well, thank you. I, I hope I was able to, to teach you something. Mm -hmm. You did. You did very well. Ashley, did you have something that you wanted to say? No, nothing I can think of right now. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Anthony? Okay, so Melissa, I want to thank you personally for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit and get another Zoom meeting. We all have become accustomed to yes, this, we have. this new reality. Thanks for informing us about asthma. Even us, those who live with asthma, knowing things that we, informing us about things that we did not know. So I want to thank you, and on behalf of NKCDC, thank you for taking your time out of your day to come sit and talk with us and our viewers about asthma. And remember, guys, to just breathe. And I do have the names of our raffle winners. So for our air, the, the drawing for the raffle is now closed. And I do have the names of the winners. So for our air filter, that goes to Ms. Rosanna Mercado. And for the cleaning supplies, that is Lourdes Evel. And for the humidifier, that is for Tamika Lowe. I want to thank you all for participating in our raffle. And you guys that have entered the raffle, you guys who have entered the raffle, I want to remind you that it will be delivered to you sometime next week. We do have your information. And thank you for taking your time out to participate. Next month, May 6th, we will be back uh, with another virtual health hour entitled Reentry. Uh, so look out for that. We'll send, we'll post information on our Facebook pages and on our YouTube where to find the link to join us next month. Again, that'll be May 6th and we'll be covering re-entry. Bye everyone.
Thanks again, Melissa. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.